On the morning of July 27, 1987, Dr. Jerome Hellman, a Brentwood, California internist, left his home and started his morning exercise run through his exclusive Los Angeles neighborhood. Even though there had been reports of two dogs running loose in the neighborhood in recent days, Dr. Hellman never imagined that he could be in danger that morning. I was in the early part of my run, uh, less than a block from my home, and running into the first cul-de-sac when I noticed two dogs, um, uh, sort of tense and um, uh, threatening, and I stopped immediately in my tracks. Rottweilers, in particular, have a very high prey drive. In her job as kennel manager, Eileen Pinder receives numerous complaints about Rottweilers. A lot of times, these animals will go after uh, any kind of moving object, whether it be a human or a child or another animal. Suddenly, Dr. Hellman became the dog's prey. And when they saw me, they uh, put up their ears, so to speak and started to walk towards me and then charged. The dogs were on him instantly. As Hellman tried to flee, he was pursued by the Rottweilers. I was being cornered and I felt I was not gonna survive. I mean, I almost had made peace, you know, at that point because I knew I was trapped. The doctor was right. Defenseless, he was faced with two Rottweilers that had tasted blood. When these animals start to attack someone or another animal, they will follow suit. It's a game to them to take turns attacking and biting and maiming and injuring and possibly even killing a human or another animal. Fortunately, the dog's barking and Dr. Hellman's screams awaken one of his neighbors, screenwriter and director Daniel Petrie Sr. I bounced out of bed and I ran right outside, uh, right into the middle of the street uh, with just pajamas on. Realizing there was a vicious dog attack in progress, Petrie grabbed a broom and a rake. At a point where my strength was uh, sapped, I really couldn't get up anymore. A neighbor had heard me screaming and came to my rescue. He was backed up hard against the wall and he was hysterical. I threw him the rake or the broom, and here I said. As the relentless attack continued, Dr. Hellman tried his best to repel the dogs with a weapon, but the Rottweilers kept attacking. And I was able to fend off the, the dogs with, uh, I believe, the broom until uh, help came. Finally, animal control officers arrived and were able to capture the Rottweilers. Dr. Hellman suffered severe cuts to his head, arms, and legs. He was taken to St. John's Medical Center, where he underwent four and a half hours of surgery. 200 stitches were required to close his wounds. Still amazingly, he doesn't blame the dogs. I am not angry in the sense that I felt the need to kill them or to maim them or to harm them. Um, again, I was in awe of them as, as powerful and beautiful creatures, and I did not feel anger towards them. I'm angry more at the system that put me at risk uh, than at the animals, uh, who are creatures and who don't know better. The owner is responsible 100% for any damages done in this case. These animals were on public property, um, running at large. Dr. Hellman received a small settlement from the city of Los Angeles, which later acknowledged that it had received a complaint about the dogs, but had done nothing about it. Hellman also received a small amount from the dog owner's insurance company. He believes neighbors need to watch out for each other. You can never be too safe. Uh, you have to really connect and communicate with your neighbors and if there are problems or anything suspicious you really have to you, ha you have the responsibility to share that with those around you not just your family authorities suspect that the rottweilers that attacked dr hellman had been trained to attack and probably kill 
They were both taken to animal control for observation. One of the dogs was allegedly stolen from the shelter. The other was released a year and a half later to a person whose identity was never revealed.